Apple doesn't always get it right. Far from it, in fact. This is the iPad mini. If you combine it with the brilliant Apple Pencil and the fantastic paper-like screen protector, link in description, it's one of the best devices Apple has ever made. This is the iPhone 13 mini. It is the best smartphone I have ever owned. These are the AirPods Pro, and yes, I did have mine engraved, I have no idea why, but if you live in Apple land, these are unbeatable when it comes to earbuds. But sometimes Apple gets things biblically wrong. Today, I'm gonna to reveal five of their biggest missteps, in my opinion. The first is the way they price their peripherals, and I'm gonna give you two examples of this. The first is this, which is the Lightning to 3.5 millimeter audio cable. It is, without a shadow of a doubt, the worst thing I have ever bought in my entire life. It's flimsy, ugly, and doesn't have one single redeeming feature. For instance, if it was just braided, like a lot of the Apple cables are, then it would have removed some of the buyer's remorse that you get from spending about 30 quid on this thing. It's utterly terrible. The second is the Magic Keyboard with the Touch ID and Numeric Keypad option. Yes, that is the price that you can see in front of you now. And to be honest, if I'm gonna spend that much on a keyboard, I'll grab myself an Iquinix F96. Thank you very much. There's also the silly stuff. There's the infamous 949 pounds Pro stand for the Pro Display XDR and nearly 700 pounds for a set of Mac Pro wheels. More recently, there is the brilliantly stupid 19 pounds polishing cloth. It gets even sillier too. I recently discovered that they still sell a security lock adapter for that trash can Mac Pro for 49 quid. I'll have two please, Tim. It's either utter obnoxiousness or just the blind faith that Apple has in its products. I don't know what it is, but they just don't seem to care about this. They make their money from the iPhone, from services, from all those big things. Yet they still charge a fortune for some of these, let's be honest, fairly terrible accessories. And I'll tell you what, they're not gonna stop anytime soon. Number two is their dreadful webcams. Now, no one can convince me that there is a great webcam somehow hiding away inside the studio display. Trust me, people have tried in the comment section. It doesn't exist. Whatever Apple has placed inside that monitor is an absolute turd of a camera. And the more that you use devices like the 16-inch MacBook Pro, the MacBook Air, the more you realize that Apple doesn't really care about webcams. We've seen that with iOS 16 and macOS Ventura, where you can basically turn your iPhone into a webcam now. They've given up on these webcams themselves. The exception to the rule, weirdly, appears to be the now discontinued iMac Pro, which had a 1080p webcam and which completely smashed the 1500 quid studio display in a test I saw on Twitter a little while ago. I get told off sometimes for not mentioning the webcams in my MacBook Pro and MacBook Air reviews, but that's because they're still pretty dreadful and there are far more interesting things to talk about. Regardless, this is simply not good enough from a company that can seemingly do so much with such limited camera hardware in their smartphones. Next on my list is something that makes me very sad, which is the rumored killing off of the iPhone mini series. As mentioned earlier, the iPhone 13 mini is the best and most exciting iPhone I've ever owned. Unfortunately, it sounds like it's the swan song for this particular iPhone form factor as well. Apple is notoriously secretive when it comes to the breakdown of its iPhone sales figures, but most iPhone analysts and industry insiders seem to agree that the iPhone mini series has never sold that well. For whatever reason, neither the iPhone 12 mini or the iPhone 13 mini have hit Apple's sales targets. And this is made even more perplexing for me when I consider the fact that the most popular video I've ever made is my iPhone 13 mini review. That video has had over half a million views and I still receive comments about it every single day. Clearly, there is mass interest in this product and if the comments are anything to go by, people absolutely love this thing. But this obviously isn't enough to justify Apple making more of this particular device. Oh well, it was nice while it lasted. Number four is running old designs into the ground. Despite my constant gushing about the iPhone 13 mini on this channel, it did admittedly play second fiddle to this, the 2022 iPhone SE earlier this year. Back then, I simply couldn't stop using Apple's budget smartphone. However, despite the kind of admirable just get it done attitude of this phone, 
There's no doubting that it looks absolutely ancient against the competition. Those big screen bezels, the Touch ID button, and a screen itself which is pretty rubbish by today's standards. It just makes it look like a bit of a relic. But Apple does this all the time. They'll squeeze every last cent of bottom line profit from a design before updating it. And the iPhone SE sits within a long line of Apple products that have received this treatment, from the fantastic MacBook Air to the equally awesome Mac Mini. And you could argue that the Apple Watch sits in a similar category. As great as this thing is, there's no denying that it's pretty much looked like this since it was launched. Over the years, it's just got slightly bigger and faster. And that's why I'm really, really hoping that these rumors about an Apple Watch Pro will come true later this year. But this desire to run designs into the ground is one that will never be addressed. It's why Apple is so profitable. And arguably, it doesn't really matter. The M1 MacBook Air is a great example of a fantastic Apple product that is sitting within quite a tired chassis but you can still buy it. Even though the M2 MacBook Air is here now, you can still buy that M1 MacBook Air because Apple knows that lots of people will buy it. Right, I've saved the best or the worst till last. It's this. My mouse of choice these days is the brilliant Logitech MX Master 3 because I'm a YouTuber. And yeah, okay, it's a bit more expensive than the Apple Magic Mouse, but it's probably the best peripheral I've ever bought. By comparison, the Magic Mouse will still set you back a not insignificant £99, and it's fighting desperately hard against that aforementioned Lightning to 3.5mm audio jack for the winner of the Worst Product to Ever Ship Award. There are several issues with the Magic Mouse. The first is the fact that it is needlessly easy to accidentally use upside down. Just like that terrible first generation Apple TV Siri remote, there's just no affordance for the correct orientation apart from that Apple logo. So you have to look at it. If, if you've left it on your desk and it's swirled around for whatever reason, it's very easy to start using it the wrong way around. That is stupid. Secondly, it's not actually magic. I've never been a fan of the use of that word in Apple's product lineup. If you're gonna make something magic or call something magic, at least give it a card trick or a, an elusive rabbit to pull out of a hat. Thirdly, it's too small. I don't have big hands, stop laughing at the back, yet the Magic Mouse still fits far too snugly within the palm of my hand. And that means the use of those gesture controls, which are quite cool, is just a case of kind of arthritis-inducing finger gymnastics. Lastly, and you knew this was coming, there is the charging method. Now, I will not let this drop because it is so teeth-itchingly stupid. If you're not aware, in order to charge this Magic Mouse, let me just grab a cable, lightning cable, obviously, you have to take the mouse, turn it upside down, and plug your lightning cable in there. And as you can see, this renders the mouse completely unusable while it's charging. And no amount of, yeah, but the battery lasts for weeks is gonna make this okay, because you're still gonna to have to charge it at some stage. And that need, in my experience, inevitably arises when you're halfway through a vital piece of work. Every other wireless mouse I've ever used can be operated while it's charging. When the Magic Mouse needs some juice, you literally have to stop using your computer. How can that ever be okay? If you combine this stupid charging method with all of the things that I mentioned a moment ago, it makes the Magic Mouse the most user-hostile device Apple has ever released, in my opinion, and it deserves every meme, GIF, and Windows fan fueled joke thrown its way. It's just terrible. Apple is an easy company to love and dislike in equal measure. It's a bit like that flashy mate who both impresses you and frustrates you. You're forever impressed by his choice of clothing and his ability to come up with ideas that you wish you thought of yourself, but you deeply wish he didn't have his head buried quite so far up his own backside. Now it's your turn. What do you not like about Apple? Let rip in the comments section below. And if you're up for more Apple controversies, keep watching for a link to a recent interview I did with Max Tech, which was all about this M2 chip controversy. You do not want to miss this one.